Number one, I want the young people to listen to this first one. How do you make yourself developed, stronger, better, more productive for yourself and for others? Number one, take responsibility, man. Take responsibility, meaning you are able to respond to your actions. You take them. Admit when you make a mistake. If you did, if you did it right, alhamdulillah. If you did it wrong, take responsibility. I'm going to talk about the first pathway to being successful and then a second pathway that complements this one. Two pathways I'm going to talk to you about. You can choose one or the other or you can blend between the two. As I told you, these are studies by thousands of experts and scholars both in the Islamic world and non-Muslim world. So the first pathway I want to talk about is called building your productivity. A Muslim has to be productive, my dear brothers and sisters. A Muslim has to be what? Productive. Remember the hadith we mentioned a, a couple of weeks ago. We said, Two believers. One is strong, one is weak. The strong believer is better than the weak believer. And we talked about strong iman, strong resilience, strong willpower. We talked about what makes you a strong character. We talked about resources. We talked about finances. We talked about strength and health and so on. And we also said a mu'min, as Rasul also said, Allah loves a servant that when he or she decides to do something, a good project, masters it. You don't stop halfway. Continue to the end, even if you fail along the way. Continue. Remember when we mentioned in the hadith, in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, when they were going to Uhud. Do you remember that battle of Uhud? And, and this is something Muslims do when they study the seerah. Don't focus on the battles, but rather focus on what, how the Prophet ﷺ was teaching his companions during all these events. The human side, the wisdom side, the leadership side, the development side. What is he teaching them? It's not about the sword. It's not about the battle. It's about everything in between. Would you imagine sometimes battles will be happening? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is discussing and teaching his companions how to make tayammum, how to make wudu, what breaks the wudu, all these things. It's constant learning. So he wore the armor, he wore the armor, and the companions had uh, exerted energy and sort of put pressure on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an innocent way that, Ya Rasulullah, Let's go out. We think we should go out and face them. Rasul Sallallahu said we should stay in Medina. And then when he saw the majority ruled, he went inside and wore his armor. When he came out, the companions felt regret and they felt sorry. They felt that they may have put pressure on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, they regret and they said, Ya Rasulullah, forgive us. We may have compromised and made you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So we'll go with what you said. And he said, a prophet, when he, when he wears the armor, does not take it off. Meaning, as Allah says, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Once you make a decision and you're determined, then keep going. Don't stop. And now, the building and being productive is four parts. I'm going to talk about four parts. The first part is to be successful in building yourself. To be successful in building yourself. To develop yourself. To develop yourself, there are four things. Number one. Number one, I want the young people to listen to this first one. How do you make yourself developed, stronger, better, more productive for yourself and for others? Number one, take responsibility, man. Take responsibility, meaning you are able to respond to your actions. You take them. Admit when you make a mistake. If you, did, if you did it right, alhamdulillah. If you did it wrong, take responsibility. There are no excuses, brothers and sisters. Avoid excuses. No blame. Don't put the blame on anything or anyone or any event. Or on any flimsy excuse. Or, are you ready to hear this one? Don't put the blame on supernatural occurrences. You know what supernatural occurrences are? Making up a belief or a myth of some supernatural nature and saying it's because of that. There is a book, a comedic book. It's called The 365 Excuses for Being Late to Work. You can put it for anything else. 365 excuses for being late to school. 355 six excuses to being late to home. Anything else. It's all comedy. It's all jokes. And it makes fun of people who make excuses. And it gives you 365 different excuses to say to your boss and to other people why you were late. Um, Things like, 
you were trying a new juice blender and it wasn't charged very well and you were trying to work out the instructions and it made you late to work. Uh, you blame it on you were having a nice dream and you just thought I'll sleep another five minutes, five minutes became ten minutes, sorry. Or blame it on the wife or the kids or on something like that. Take responsibility. All it requires is you to better manage yourself. That's all it is. I remember once I used to be late to work for a little while and uh, my, uh, my, um, my colleague said to me something very simple and it worked. He said, I'm sorry I'm ten minutes late. And he said to me, just wake up ten minutes earlier. <laughs> Scratch my head and I go, yeah, he's right. Wake up ten minutes earlier. Is that ten minutes that precious to get that much sleep in? Some of us, if we don't get that 10 minutes, we've got to work it out somehow in the day. I've got to make up that 10 minutes. I've got to sleep somewhere. No, no, no. No, you make the decision if you want to be energetic and energized or not. And laziness is a decision too. Energy is a decision. Laziness is a decision. Okay, I know that sometimes if you're very tired and you're sick, that's a different story. Anyway, brothers and sisters, no excuses for a believer. Take responsibility. Sometimes a student comes up or the parent you have an interview with them. I'm a teacher, as you know. And sometimes a student says, Why did you fail me, sir? I didn't fail you. A parent says, Why did the school fail my son, my daughter? This is the school's fault. It's the teacher's fault. We don't fail anybody. Your child failed. They didn't put in what is needed. Don't put blame on others. And don't think when no one's attacking it. Just take responsibility and see what you can do better. Don't take, because that's going to drag on in the rest of your life. A Muslim should not be like that. Another thing a Muslim does is uh, they start to blame family. They start blaming the world for their problems. I'm oppressed. I'm vulnerable. It's my parents. My family's toxic. Uh, my teacher's fault, etc. Brothers and sisters, there's no need to say that. Trust me, turn it around and look at yourself and say, what can I do? And do it. Do something better. Don't run away from it. Sometimes we get upset with someone and say, I cut them off. Block them. Block them because they're toxic. But everybody says that. You can solve a problem. If you can't solve it, you can minimize a problem. Don't just cut it all off. We have a famous statement among the scholars. If you can't take it all, don't leave it all. Keep some string. I'll give you an example. Uh, someone asked me if my child decides to leave Islam. I've asked this question a lot of, from many different people. Should we cut them off and just block them off and never see them ever again? I said, at least one of you, if all of you block them off, one of you keep a little hair between you and him. Just keep some communication. You might think, what? Kafir, apostate. I said, no, no. Some people are really misguided. They just don't know. They're confused. And I've had many people who left Islam and came back, alhamdulillah. Just about three weeks ago, up in... Uh, other side of the town here, we had a 17, 18 year old that came and says, I want to renew my shahada. Left Islam for two years, decided I made a mistake. Don't ever judge people and say, khalas, they're out of the picture. Nuh salam did not leave his son to the last breath until the wave came and took him while his father is still trying. So there's a difference. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this, that don't just cut off everything because you're going to fall into bigger problems. Now, one important thing I want to say. Remember how I said some people, they blame on supernatural events. Their life decisions are connected so heavily on their dreams. They make their dreams like it's Quran sent down from heaven. Like it's a rule or a command. Or they connect it to, let's say, jinns. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm possessed. If that doesn't work, maybe someone's done magic on me. If that doesn't work, Everyone resorts to the classical one. Someone's given me the eye. Why doesn't my car work? Well, my car hasn't been working for a while. I've been going to the mechanic several times. It's never happened before. Maybe there's an eye. Sheikh, can you please come and read on my car? Just get some water and splash it all over the car. And okay. Some people, they say, well, in my house, I don't know. I've been uh, feeling a bit down lately and things are going wrong. My light bulb doesn't work. And the other day it flooded. It, um, um, it, um, what's the word for it? flickered and all that stuff please read on my house brothers and sisters let me tell you something the eye on a person does not show that way to have magic done on you or to have a jinn or to have sorcery is a very 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 small chance 
I'm talking about 0.01% chance. So the likelihood of it is very, 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 very small. And I don't even say the word possession. There's no such thing as called possession. There's in the Quran says mas, like a connection. But there is no definition for it among the scholars. There's different opinions. The point that I want to make out of this, brothers and sisters, whether it's, you know, there or not, the majority of us are not possessed. There's no magic done on us. There's no eye on you. Because why do I only hear it from the Muslims all the time? It's like nobody else gets possessed against Muslims. No eye as it happens except to Muslims. Dreams. I know I gave one talk about dreams the other day and people took it like it was Quranic ayah. I had thousands of people holding on to everything they saw in their dream as if it was Quran. Ya akhi, we have the Quran with us. Why did Allah bring us the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ if it's all based on dreams and that's it? Dreams are just a little tiny feeling of something, but we don't have a measure to interpret it for you, brothers and sisters. Nobody, only the Prophets can really interpret it. Instead, the Rasul ﷺ said, talk to someone who you trust and love and, and loves you and full wisdom. And if it's a dream that makes you feel good, because usually the way you interpret the dream is the way you're going to live it out. It's a psychological thing, really. There's a lot of psychology in it, brothers and sisters. And sometimes there are good dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you know, some people they say, Oh, I saw Allah in my dream. I've had this said to me several times. A guy who's wearing a turban and uh, a beard, and I don't know, when we said, SubhanAllah, brothers, this is the shaitan coming to you and making you to uh, appear that way to teach you the wrong way. Some people manipulate others and they say, I, just, I saw Allah a thousand times and I saw the Prophet this many times. Everybody goes, Allah is a saint. And then he makes himself a prophet himself. Everybody, and then takes the money from them and starts manipulating people. Brothers and sisters, be careful. This is not how the scholars and the prophets taught us. So number one, brothers and sisters, don't let these things deter you from your success. Stop holding on to supernatural things. Sometimes it's out of our mind. Sometimes people want to get married and let's say the parent doesn't want that spouse for them. Doesn't want that person, doesn't like that guy, doesn't like that girl. So they come and use religion. They go and make a stikhara, the mother and father, and they come and they say, daughter, son, wallah, we saw in our dreams, this person is killing people in the neighborhood. Wallah, we saw in our dreams, this person has got a farm of, of marijuana, is selling it to people and drugs, stay away from him. It's because you don't want him. Some people, they use this as, as a, this is wallahi haram. Haram. So brothers and sisters, this deters from stop thinking about this stuff, keep going forward, inshallah. Yani the, the eye, for example, al aynu haqq, Rasul said, eye is true, the evil eye. But in all of the 23 years of the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and about 30 years of the lives of the Khulafa, 53 years, the historian, the, 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 uh, the scholars of Sira and history, the Muslim scholars of Sira have only mentioned two or three incidents of the evil eye. With us, it's happening a hundred times a day. Anyway, brothers and sisters, don't hold on to this. Keep going, brothers and sisters, and move forward. A Muslim doesn't let these things hold them back. If you fail, try again. But when you try again, try a different way. Einstein used to say, if you try something the same way, do not expect a different result. You're always going to get the same results. So try things a different way. I think it was Edison who uh, invented the light bulb. Am, am I right? Take away the controversies, but I think the one who invented the light bulb, Edison, he said, I learnt 260 ways of how a light bulb will not work. Do you know what that means? It means before he succeeded, he had 260 mistakes. So he said, I can teach you 260 ways the light bulb will not work until he found the way. So a Muslim will fail and try again and try again. The believers failed in the battle of Uhud and Allah says, uh, Don't assume of it as bad for you, it is good for you. So goodness does come out of it. Okay, we move on to the second one now, I'll go a bit faster. The second thing of developing yourself is, brothers and sisters, be authentic to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be authentic to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Don't make flimsy excuses. Don't go around and say, oh, because of this. Be honest. And, and what do you do with that? I mentioned it last time. Sit down. Get a piece of paper or a book. Some people need a book. And write down all the faults and shortcomings that you can identify in yourself. Now, these speakers, they talked about the same thing. And I went and tried it the other day. And I counted 53. 53 problems in me. <laughs> Do you think I looked at it as low self-esteem or that I'm a failure or a loser? No. I looked at it to see, okay, good. These are the areas I can improve on. Is there anyone who is perfect? No. The moment I accepted my imperfection, Allah, my self-esteem shot through the roof. I don't care if you find a fault in me. I already found it before you and 
I own it. One kid, you know, sometimes students say, you're like this or you're like that. I say, yeah, I am. <laughs> what, my bald head? Yeah, yeah, my, I've got a bald head. Alhamdulillah. Uh, someone says to you, uh, oh, look at you, you look like this. Say, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I do look like that. Allah made me like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what, do you, what do you know? So what? The point is, brothers and sisters, if you have failures, remember one time playing soccer with my friends when I was back in, in primary school and secondary school, and I was really bad at soccer. Uh, they made me the goalkeeper. <laughs> you guys know why. If you're supposed to goalkeeper, goalkeeping, goalkeeping is you're, not, you're going to stuff up the game, so they put you as goalkeeper. And then they try to keep the ball away from you. I still failed, even with great players, and we still lost the game. They made fun of me, of everything I did. I was a little kid, but I learned from that that subhanallah I'm not really good at soccer I'm gonna go and get someone to teach me a little bit more and I did I wasn't good at basketball and then I go man I gotta I gotta share basketball games with with some students and people and I went and got my nephew to teach me who cares brothers and sisters the thing is you know your failures doesn't matter they're not failures they're areas for you to grow on number three be a person of willpower I find this in young people a lot will nobody can decide for you to study Nobody can decide for you to read. Nobody can decide for you to do a course. Nobody can decide for you to do your bed. Nobody can decide for you to look after yourself and to um, make something of yourself. You have to decide. Your mother and father can put you in a room, lock you up, and put you in there for four hours with all the books and the textbooks and everything you need until you study. You're not getting out of there until blah, 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 until you do your studies. You might go ahead and, and sit there for four hours and say, well, I studied. Sir, I studied. Parents, I studied. Well, four hours every day. I remember one student, I came up to him and said, did you study? Did you, did you really study? And he goes, honestly, I was, just, I was just reading that like that. I didn't even read. That's not studying. The only person who can make you study is you. The only person who can make the money is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and strive towards it is you. The only person who can learn about management is you. The only person who can get up and get dressed is you. If you don't make that decision, you will not do it. It's called wishful thinking. So you got to be convinced of your goal and connect yourself to some people who are distinguished. Don't just keep having the same surroundings and people that you always talk to day in, day out. What are you going to learn from them? Change your connections. Find out who is distinguished. Who, who at the school? Who in my work? Who in the environment? Who at the masjid? Who anywhere? Who, it seems like this person has got something that normal people don't have or the ordinary people don't have. Why don't I go and have a connection with that person? Maybe I can learn something. Now on social media you have a lot of these people we call gurus. Gurus in different areas. Follow them. Follow them and learn from them. Number four, take control of your behavior. If you want to develop yourself, take control of your what? Behavior. Don't be, don't live your life as a reactionary. You just react. Someone gets you upset, you react. Somebody provoked you, you react. Some people, they say to me, I'm not motivated. I don't feel like doing it. Get out of here. Stop this. Stop this princess. If you're going to go by motivations and feelings, you're not going to achieve anything. Can you imagine that? Every morning you wake up, I don't feel like waking up. Allahu Akbar. Imagine everybody thought that way. I don't feel like drinking water. You still go and drink water because your body needs it. Be disciplined. So I, I'm going to do it and tell yourself to be quiet, shut yourself up and say, stop, get up and do it. And you'll feel proud about yourself, inshallah. Otherwise, you won't achieve it. So don't be a reactionary person. Uh, a student said to me, came with a broken hand one day and I said, what happened? He said, fire out, man, it's my brother's fault. I go, what happened? He got me angry and I punched the wall. And you, it's not your brother, it's you. He made me swear. She made me like this. It's my mum. She's like, she just gets on my nerves. That's why I, I became like this. No, no, you don't inherit anger. You don't inherit bad behavior. Bad behavior is learned. You can make a decision. You can make a decision. I'll give you something called the 90 second rule. It's established science that once you get angry, once your emotions play up, your whole body goes through a process, a hormonal process. That hormonal process that goes everywhere haywire like a, a storm inside of you lasts for 90 seconds. If you can wait until it all gets, your body gets back to normal, then you're able to think. After that, if you continue to be angry and emotional, it means you want to be. You can say to yourself, I don't want to be. Hands up if you can promise yourself right now 
that for the next seven days, you're not going to get angry. Who would like to? Okay, I'm going, I'm going to do it with you. I promise. I promise. In the next seven days, that I will not get angry. I hear someone maybe thinking, I can hear your thinking say, Brother, how can you say that? Only Allah knows the future. How can you say that? Qaddar Allah ma sha'a fa'al. Of course Allah knows the future. But you have a willpower. You can make a promise, see what happens. You wake up in the morning and say, Today I'm going to be energetic. Wallahi, try it. Say to yourself, I'm going to be energetic. Even if you slept for four hours. Watch what happens in the day. Wallahi, I've tried it. I try all these. They say to me, how come you smile? I say, because I've made a decision this morning, I'm going to smile. And the more you smile, you smile better. And other people around you smile too. Then you see them smile and go, oh my God, everybody's cheerful. It's because you started it. You started it. Start something good. Just